Hello everyone and welcome back to the DCS FA18C Hornet tutorial series. In this episode we'll take a look at the ANAAQ28 Lightning II targeting pod, its symbology and the various ways it can be used against both aerial and surface targets. Let's get started. Developed by Northrop Grumman in 1995, the ANAAQ28 Lightning II is an all-weather electro-optical and infrared targeting pod target designation, ranging and lasing capabilities. It provides the pilot with a live image from either the charge couple device, CCD, TV sensor or the forward-looking infrared or FLIR sensor. It has the ability to track moving targets, cue a designator laser and search for other laser designations. The lightning pod is free to rotate in two axes but can be obscured by the aircraft and the rest of the targeting pod structure. When the image is obscured it is said to be masked. When the Lightning II pod fires the laser target designator, or LTD, the signal is modulated with a pulse repetition frequency that is coded as a four digit number from 1211 to 1688. This allows the aircraft to distinguish between simultaneous laser signals made by other aircraft and ground units. The laser spot tracker uses this coded PRF to search for a specific laser signal, ignoring laser spots with a different code. The lightning pod is activated by moving the FLIR power switch from off to either standby or on. Once moved from the off position, the pod will enter a warm-up period during which the FLIR format page will display not timed out and cannot be used. Once this period is finished, the FLIR page will either show standby symbology or operating symbology denoted by STB, Y or OPR in the top left hand corner. Note that no image will be displayed initially until a sensor point of interest or SPI has been designated. Once designated the targeting pod will drive its line of sight or LOS to the sensor point of interest and a live image will do, be displayed. This can be done using the waypoint designate push button on the horizontal situation indicator. This will designate the selected waypoint as the SPI. If an SPI is undesignated, the targeting pod will enter snowplow mode, which will slew ahead and 8 degrees down from the horizon, with no ground stabilisation, allowing for passive situational awareness. By selecting master arm to arm and selecting the air to ground mode, the FLIR page will enter air to ground symbology. On the top left of the current is the current FLIR operating mode, denoted by either OPR, standby or off. Line 2 underneath it will also display the current tracking mode which can be point track or area track. Area track denoted by ATRK and point track by PTRK. When not in a track mode it will enter scene mode where there will be nothing displayed. This allows the targeting pod to be slewed. Next to that is the selected FOV between wide and narrow and in wide you have the FOV indicators to show where the narrow FOV will be. To the right of that is freeze which will freeze the currently selected image and still allow the targeting pod to slew. This allows you to identify targets in a still image. The azimuth pointing angle displays a ground stabilised angle in degrees along the horizon left or right of the nose to the designated sensor point of interest. In the top right of the display is a target designator controller sensor of interest indicator to show that the FLIR page has been selected by the TDC. The north arrow indicates the direction of north projected onto the ground along the sensor line of interest. Additional lines represent east south and west accordingly. Reticule allows the reticule in the display to be hidden and displayed. The situational awareness cue shows the current line of sight that the targeting pod is looking with the edges of the screen being the horizon and directly in the centre being directly down. The slant range to target shows the current range in nautical miles to the point underneath the reticule 
The UFC button allows you to change the laser target designator and laser spot tracker codes. These are the pulse repetition frequency codes that were discussed earlier. You can see that the current code is selected at 1688 and the laser spot track code is 1688 as well. Selecting grey allows the grayscale controls to be shown which allows you to adjust the contrast and brightness of the display as required. Declutter will remove all speed, MAC and altitude readouts from the display as well as the attitude indicator as well. The laser spot track mode can be entered by selecting this button. The laser spot track code can be changed using the UFC controls. Entering laser spot tracking mode will enable the targeting pod to look for other laser target designators. This is especially useful when trying to find targets designated by other aircraft or ground units. Selecting CCD will change the format into the forward looking infrared camera. Selecting it again will change it back to the normal TV camera. When in the FLIR mode, additional controls will be shown, such as the polarity, which will change from black hot to white hot, as well as the automatic level and gain. Deselecting automatic level and gain enables the level and gain controls for manual changing. Level is effectively the brightness and gain is effectively the contrast of the image. AUTF or autofocus is currently not implemented in this version of DCS. This number here shows the current elevation of the targeting pod between the bore sight of the aircraft and the line of sight of the FLIR pod. The reticule shows the FOV indicators that selecting narrow will zoom to. When in area track, you'll notice that the crosshair has a line with a number next to it. This shows the length of this line when it's projected onto the ground, so in this case it'd be 17, 16 metres. This is especially useful for telling ground units how far a target is away from them. At the top left of the display, the coordinates display the latitude and longitude in minutes and decimal seconds of the point in the centre of the crosshairs with the ground elevation displayed in feet. Once the laser has been armed, trig and mark appear on the symbology. Boxing trig arms the laser and enables the trigger to command firing of the laser. LTD slash R will continue flashing until the laser stops firing. Boxing Mark switches the laser from a target designation laser to an IR spotting laser that is visible through night vision goggles. This is particularly useful to visually mark targets from the targeting pod for either ground forces or other airborne units. The Lightning 2 pod can also be used in air-to-air -air master mode and selecting air-to-air -air master mode will select the FLIR page on the left DDI. The symbology is much the same with the addition of TDC which enables the toggling of TDC between the attack radar and FLIR format pages. Reticule enables and disables the reticule in the centre of the screen. Declutter works the same as well as FLIR. In air to air mode, when the radar has acquired a lock on a target, Radar Slave will become available on the FLIR format page. Selecting this push button will slave the targeting pod line of sight to the radar line of sight. Pressing sensor control switch in the direction of the FLIR format page will attempt to initiate a point track lock on the centre of the screen. If the tracking is successful, two bars will appear either side of the target and new radar options will become available. This will allow the radar to be silenced and slaved to the targeting pod line of sight. Using radar silence is particularly beneficial as it inhibits radar emissions allowing the targeting pod to lock and track a target with the benefit that the tracking target will not receive any lock warning as the targeting pod is a non-emitting system. 
In Air to Ground mode, the targeting pod can be slewed using the throttle designator controller. And TDC Depress will enter a sensor point of interest under the crosshair. Selecting sensor control switch in the direction of the DDI will enter area track and point track. If the point underneath the crosshair is a moving target, in point track it will begin to track the target. If for any reason the target becomes obscured or masked by the targeting pod, the targeting pod will enter an inertial mode where it will take the last position and velocity of the moving target and continue slewing in that direction. This means that when the targeting pod is unmasked it will attempt to reacquire the lock using this inertial mode. When in point track, depressing the TDC will enter an offset cursor which will show the current coordinates at the top left hand side of the screen. When in air to ground mode, the laser can be armed using LTD slash R arm. This is a magnetic switch that will only work when in air to ground mode. If air to ground mode is taken off, the switch will return to safe. Once armed, the laser can be manually fired using the trig box, in which case LTD slash R will begin flashing to show that the laser is firing. This can be used to guide laser guided munitions such as Mavericks and laser guided bombs onto the target required. When in air to air mode, the lightning pod can be slaved to the radar using the radar slave button on the FLIR page. This will slew the targeting pod line of sight to the radar line of sight onto the target. Selecting sensor control switch in the direction of the FLIR page will enter point track mode. If the target under the crosshair has enough contrast, the point track will be successful. This is denoted by the two lines to each side of the target. Once slave to the target, the radar options will become available and these are slave and silence. Selecting silence will inhibit radar emissions, which is beneficial to ensure that the target does not receive a lock warning. Radar slave is used when the FLIR is locked onto a target that is not seen by the radar. This will slew the radar to the targeting pod line of sight and attempt to achieve a lock on the target. The FLIR can be used to provide tracking data for weapons such as the AIM-120. This is similar to the track while scan mode in the radar. This will provide steering to the AIM-120 until the weapon is close enough that it will use its own radar. This concludes episode 3. I hope you've learnt something and will now be able to use the lightning pod effectively. I recommend practicing using the targeting pod in single player before moving on to multiplayer as it is a very capable system when used correctly. If you have any questions feel free to leave a comment and I will try my best to answer them. Make sure to check out my other F18 tutorials and stay tuned for future videos where we will use the lightning pod to employ laser guided munitions. Thank you for watching.